it's that time of year again. Coming to you from the airwaves. It's a little staticky, but that's just because uh, we have, uh, we're not inside anymore, we're outside. And uh, so I'm gonna read uh, a little something to help you. I think this is the word for the day. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And other translations are in the King James. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness, which means no matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad it seems to get, uh, don't be dismayed, don't worry. And uh, Jesus also said, do not worry for I have overcome the world. I've overcome the world. Therefore you have overcome. I've overcome the world in Christ. And there's another thing I need to kind of clear up today, and that is, I think one of the main things that goes wrong <laughs> with people, and that is um, whether we're a flock of followers or whether we are um, Christ. And the answer is, with you know, found in John 17 and elsewhere, you know, we are Christ. That the whole point of the of the teachings, um, you know, you'll do more miracles than these. You you will raise the dead, and indeed, the the the, the, the saints right after Jesus departed did raise the dead. In the case of Peter and Tabitha, and did do. Uh, there have been miracles that have been undocumented. Well, right now we're going through a kind of a a sea change, you know, and on the political front. I believe that the powers of B have uh, they've switched their strategy. You might have felt it. I, I don't know how. I mean, there's still half of them that want to have a nuclear World War III and, and kill us all, which means we'd be going home. And uh, that's not so bad. But um, there's another part that have just resigned themselves to the uh, Trump presidency. That's why I'm going to say today. I don't think you'll see another assassination attempt. I mean, you might see it from an amateur thing, but in terms of a professional assassin, the other thing is when the guy said there's a $150,000 bounty, if you finish the job and kill Trump, which the Justice Department wanted you to hear, uh, it's not 150. He, he's easily, a, he's anything you want to, he's, he's a $50 million hit. He's a $100 million hit. He's, in, in the John Wick territory, they'd all be bidding. They'd, all the assassins of the world would be coming to wherever he's going to be. I guess it's going to be the, the new rally in Butler. And I would say they're going to keep that pretty well locked down because they know they have to have, the people have to have faith in the state to protect them or they're not going to vote. I mean, they're certainly not going to vote for um, Kamala Harris, who's a, you know, who's proven herself to be false. If she is a witch, she's proven herself to be a lousy witch. Lousy. I mean, she's nowhere near like a Taylor Swift or a Oprah Winfrey or something on that level. You know, she's an amateur compared to them, right? Okay. So, I, I, there won't, I, I'm just saying there could very well be. All the smart money is on another assassination attempt. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm just not feeling that completely, and I'm not feeling that... Um, they're going to go out of their way to, to overtly cheat and have have it be a big controversy that will be. Uh, I mean, they are putting the pallets of bricks out already for the uh, for November, and uh, they're already showing up in uh, Springfield, Ohio, and other places. Uh, the 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 bricks are there on the corner, figuring that if Trump wins, that uh, the same uh, idiotic forces. It's the same as the, 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 the same as the French Revolution. It's the same people, Bolsheviks, whatever, are going to want to break windows and burn stuff down. Will they ever rebuild? Of course not. They never have rebuilt in the history of man. Why would they begin now? They wouldn't. They would not rebuild. They're only there to tear down. And that's not the kind of thing that I would follow in my life. I, I like builders. I like people that make things. I like people that create things. I like innovation. Even if it's a little misguided at first, you know, I like, you know, that that sort of thing 
And, and I believe that with this uh, technological revolution, what the fourth turning will turn out to be is a, another technological revolution like the uh, industrial revolution, uh, where it goes completely you know, digital on the one hand, but I think we're in for some surprises. I don't, I, I do believe that uh, RFK Jr. will have an impact on, uh, on the food supply and the poisons that are put in the food, making, we're the sickest country on earth. America is the sickest country on earth, has the biggest healthcare system on earth, and it's the sickest people. And that is because uh, the corporatocracy has decided you know, they want eugenics, they want America, they want to take it over whichever way they can. Uh, they also figure if they put Trump in there and it looks like he's going to be able to, uh, you know, have his presidency, that there could be assassination attempts even then, um, just as there was on JFK. So I'm not saying the assassination threat is over. I'm just saying I feel this sort of resignation that they're they're just they've done the numbers and they can see that Trump is something like 20 points ahead on any poll any day and that any poll that says he's neck and neck is either lying or um, they just have the wrong information they're just sampling too many Democrats whatever in other words he's completely popular uh, and it's because of the policies of economic uh, resuscitation. Um, the, the, the one policy that I think is he's very popular for is the uh, tariffs. The idea that if, if uh, now Ford or, you know, these various companies want to go to Mexico and build plants, and he said, well, if I'm president, there'll be 100% tariff on that car. Okay, uh, that that's enough to deter them from even opening the plant. They won't even try. But since the jury is still out on whether we get um, a Trump presidency, you know, um, we don't know. I am, you know, convinced that I would be persona non grata at, uh, at Mar-a-Lago and that, you know, we're not going to be friends exactly. I think Trump would think that I'm completely crazy, which a lot of people do conclude that. So... But I, I mean, no harm. I'm, I don't dislike him. I don't. I just know that Kamala is backed by Marxists, and I've been a lifelong fighter of satanic things, you might say. And Marxism is a satanic thing. Yeah. It is really. So I'm, I'm going to be. Uh, against it because I've seen what it's done to people. I saw what happened in Venezuela, for example. Anyway, my screen is blinking around, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to open up a regular podcast because I don't want to have too big a video. So I'm just here to say hi. I'm outside. I'm, I might as well be on Mars, coming to you from Mars. This little, it's hazy. It's a, through a haze, blah, 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 layers, you know. And I'll see you next time. Uh, greetings. Uh, once again, I just finished my video and I'm on to the uh, audio section. Uh, basically, um, like I said, I had this feeling that I, I don't know whether this is influenced by, you know, just positively uh, positive spiritual leading, but the feeling is that the uh, I think they're kind of resigned to uh, letting the election go forth. And uh, I think if, if Trump is the winner, they can already tell that. I think they're going to, uh, you know, they're not going to go to World War III before that. I mean, there are some fanatics that want to, like the, the bad man Zelensky, who sort of reminds me of Napoleon, and, you know, uh, defeated at Waterloo, you know, he will be defeated. And I do believe that's going to happen. I think people are sick and tired of him. I'm sick of him coming over here and treating Americans like shit and, and basically um, demanding money for this uh, so-called, you know, worthy cause, which 
is bullshit. You know, it's it's a uh, not a worthy cause at all. It's just that they have a plan to get rid of Russia or to take it over themselves, as they always have. And if they went forth with any further attacks, they will lose. But then again, so would we. I think other minds are prevailing here. People that are more cunning and more deceptive than the overt breakers of things, which I guess you could call it the uniparty is the breaker of things. They break things. They're the Bolsheviks. They're the, the, uh, the dupes in the French Revolution. They break things. They kill people. They don't rebuild. They don't. They don't build. They don't contribute. They just tear down because it's unfair. It was unfair from the very beginning. Let me tell you when it was unfair. For those of you who are doubting yourselves now, you've been marching around, burning stuff up, and protesting, but you're now doubting your your leaders. Let me explain something to you because I don't think you're getting it. If you want to go on a rampage of getting even and a real rampage of uh, equity, equality, uh, or what is it, uh, equity, um, inclusion, and, and tolerance, and, and, and I don't know, DEI, diversity, okay. If you want to get down to the root nub of the whole thing, you must kill every last man to the beginning man. You must go back in time and kill every last man, including Adam. You have to kill everybody. And still, you would not be satisfied. Understand? If you go through with what they are saying, and you, uh, I see there's already pallets in Springfield, Ohio. They've already, you know, dropped them off. Uh, these people are above the law. Those are there for the people to pick up bricks. I, I believe they're, they're, they're kind of resigned on the election, but then in the aftermath, they want to make things holy hell, whatever. But they're divided. They're factionalized. They're not thinking clearly. Uh, there is no way to make it even in America. There is no way to make it even, you know, and, and the whole idiotic, pedantic, and stupid Obama, who is cunning, he's like a lizard, a snake, but he's stupid. He's ultimately stupid, a stupid man, a dumb man. He's programmed uh, by his Marxist leaders and, and by his Marxist indoctrination. But basically, it leads to nothing. Because why? Because you can't kill your way to victory. And this whole thing with, uh, you know, Putin and Zelensky and all that is that's right out of Obama's playbook, you, you know, and, and others, you know, uh, you know, you could say Dick Cheney, too. They're 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 blood brothers. The problem is with these warmongers, you cannot kill your way to victory on you know, a frivolous war uh, th th because you, you want to make money. And then tell all the people, once we get their candidate in, who's a warmonger, Kamala, who's a Marxist warmonger, basically uh, then it'll be fair then. You'll have, you know, trans community will be happy again. And, and everyone will be happy once we get this, but we got to get behind the war and volunteer to go kill the, uh, the Russians, because, you know, they're, they're, they're evil and they're against us. And the answer to that is, of course, that's ridiculous. And why would you ever even think that? Why would you ever even, you know, put a whole people in your crosshairs to uh, kill if they mean no harm to you? If they mean no harm to you and they don't. And that's what I've seen all over the place. Stupidity upon stupidity upon stupidity. If you're Dumb enough to believe Obama. Yeah, you know, uh, this is stolen land. Well, to give it back, we must kill all, not white people, all people who are here in America that pay taxes and have a job need to be killed in order to really make it equitable. Are you going to do that? I remember one person contacted me. They were so mad because they were pulling down statues, and I took sort of issue with it and they said it's just a statue Zeph. I said it's paid for by the, these you know super capitalist uh, pigs pigs are running this war pigs they're pigs of war that that have you thinking that this Marxist solution 
is going to make it good for you. And it's going to be fair, finally. And the Indians will be repaid. And the and the black people will be repaid. And the, the world will be reset. It's going to be beautiful. You were duped. Admit it. You lose. Admit it. You're wrong. 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 And I'm glad it's passing. We got bigger fish to fry. The problem is not in the collective. It's in the individual. The problem isn't with us. It's with you. It's with me as an individual. My main battle and main concern is within myself. That's where I have to have victory. Because otherwise, if my fallen nature takes over, then it's uh, obviously... Uh, A victory for Satan. If the if the uh, angels of my better nature lose, my little helpers, it's a victory for the devil. Another one bites the dust, another soul gone. How many have we lost through decadence, through child abuse? I mean, the abusers. It's funny how all the abusers... They all seem to be on the left. You know, the, all the ones supporting pedophilia. It's uh, not seem to be. They are, literally. Uh, they can't be touched because many, most of them are in another organization that you don't know about. Okay. A secret society that you know nothing about, but the state can't touch them. And nobody can. Now we're up to the stat I heard today. We're up to five hundred thousand children trafficked at the border. Not three hundred and fifty. Not three hundred and twenty-five. Five hundred thousand trafficked by Biden and Harris and Dr. Jill and the rest of the clowns. So if that's your bag, I mean, if you're a creative person and you think, oh. Uh, you know, I can't think about common sense because that would be homophobic or something like that. You know what I mean? You're worried about being politically incorrect. Don't be. The only rebel, the, the, the rebel is the exalted one. They wanted Barabbas to go free, not Jesus. They knew Jesus didn't do anything wrong, but they crucified him. They, they've tried to assassinate Trump. They've tried to... Uh, uh, who didn't, you know, they, they ginned up all this lawfare, which didn't stop him. Why do you think it didn't stop him? Well, I know orange man bad. I know people are never going to get over that. But the bottom line is the, the, the problem that we have right now, extinction and your death. No one's going to be there at your grave, buddy. Nobody gives a shit about you, okay? You're fucking done. The only way there will be any love in your life is through the Spirit and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the only love you're ever going to experience because that's the only love there is. Everything else is based on hatred. You know, I and mine, you and yours. I'm younger than you. I'm better than you. I'm faster than you. I'm richer than you. Blah, 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 blah. Jealousy, envy, anger. And the worst thing that we've ever done in this country, in my opinion, is worship of celeb celebrities, which I call celebtards, whether it be in any kind of entertainment. Sports is entertainment. So sports, uh, you know, uh, and, and uh, there's a whole thing going around that it's good to be a brat. Well, it's not good to be a spoiled, entitled brat. One that just expects everybody to bow down and give them, you know, their riches and give them their due and worship them like a god or a goddess. There is no uh, future in that. The people who actually conduct that sort of worship, who care about that kind of thing, are going down. Their lives are quickly on the, on the path of becoming useless, even to them. Hence, bring in the suicide rates. They know. To increase the suicide rates, which is unbelievable, the suicide rates among teenagers is skyrocketing, but to even ramp it up even more so there's no children, 
uh, is to to put nihilism in the heart of uh, woke. I then convince them if they think anything outside the box, if you question one thing about woke, you're, uh, you know, you're what everything Hillary Clinton said about you. A deplorable whatever, blah, 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 blah. And um, I don't think it's unwise to uh, embrace this technological revolution that we're having. We've seen these before, and we're right in the middle of it now. And where it will lead, I believe, will be spiritual, actually. I don't believe it's going to lead to AI as God and worship that. Or worse, worship yourselves as you become an avatar, meaning they kill you in a euthanasia center. Then they take your image and put it into a digital computer format that someone else manipulates, but you're not there. So what do you care? There's no future in, in AI. There's no future. There's no future anywhere. The only future is getting out of this situation. You want to call it the matrix? Fine. But that's the only hope is to escape this shithole matrix um, to, to escape, to, to, to leave. And that means to leave the realm of death as well. To leave the realm of death and strife and suffering and, uh, and, and, and hatred and to embrace a life of, of, of love and nurturing and, you know, I would say extreme positivity because once you're free of this, and I've seen there are other dimensions and portals and things that are accessible to the average individual. I mean, I haven't gone into that too much because of the dangers of, uh, I saw somebody did a prank on the internet where they put two mirrors together. And they looked in one of the mirrors, two mirrors facing each other. And then they put the camera in one of the mirrors and it was a, became a window to another time and place. And I've experienced this sort of thing, not with mirrors, but I've actually seen this kind of thing before uh, more than a few times. That's not what I mean by escape. If you escape into this other world that you can see, you're, you're just, you'd be a, a missing person here, I suppose, but you'd be somewhere else. You're still stuck. As long as we're stuck, in, and then, of course, you know about the Mandela effect and all that, that just proves how stuck you really are. The thing that just keeps in my mind is just this idea that, you know, I love to say new wine skins and, and new wine skins for new wine, right? And then I look at the scripture, it says bottles. It never said bottles in my lifetime, ever. Or the wolf will lay down with the lamb. The wolf, the lion. It never said that before. And there's millions of things like that. Uh, the, the Berstein, uh, the Ber Berenstein bears or whatever. And now they're the Berenstein bears. They are never the Berenstein bears. But those were just little tip-offs to people to let people know, the more prescient ones, the more intelligent ones in our society, that this is not real. I think from God's perspective, it's definitely a Jobian test. I believe that's why the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible, and it's in the Bible for a reason. I believe it's instructional. I believe it's trying to tell us that we're all Job in our, in our lives. We all, all of us have challenges and things that would be, you know, they might not be visible like Job's challenges, but they're still equally as challenging. And, um, you know, the instruction as to how not to complain against God. Complaining against God is what created the division. Why would God let these people starve in the desert? Why would these God let these people kill each other like that? Why would God allow nukes? It's because man was created to have, uh, to be a creator and to have free will in his creations. And God does not stand in the way of those, whether they're used for evil or used for good. This technological revolution is going to show the, that AI is just a bankrupt, idiotic propaganda tool. Now, you can use it for good, I suppose. You can come up with an idea or you can, I mean, I, one time I fed it a, 
a screenplay of a film I'm going to do. And I just wanted like a, you know, a one, one page, you know, one or two page synopsis. And uh, just about nailed it. I had to go in and rewrite it, of course. But I mean, it got that that heavy. It's it's hard to write those one page synopses for, you know, executive producers and 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 money people and you know people that don't understand what's going on or they don't read much. It's not easy to put down a beginning, middle, and end in in a, in a narrative that flows, you know, prose that flows, you know, if you will. Um, but it 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 gave me back uh, the actual synopsis. I was able to to feed it and then it fed me. So that's an example of using it for something um, that I wanted to do that had nothing to do with AI. And where I got in trouble was when I tried to get AI to kill me. And I asked it to convince me to kill myself because I have no reason to live. And it I thought it was gonna go there, then it didn't. It started flashing suicide hotlines suddenly which made me think, oh, who put that emergency stopper in there? The propagandist! You're not supposed, if you have a pure AI, you're not supposed to have like, uh, you know, uh, safety stops. It should be just wild and dangerous, shouldn't it? We're wild and dangerous, aren't we, as people? Or have they made you feel like a piece of shit? Still, uh, I'm still reflecting on that uh, Menendez thing I saw, which I, I dealt with in the uh, my podcast, uh, Sodom and Beverly Hills. Well, Sodom and Beverly, yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Beverly Hills. And so now I can, now that I've finished it, and I'm very disappointed in the uh, producers showed bravery through about six episodes, and then they went right down the shitter. Which, of course, that's why we're not. I'm not affiliated with a studio. I'm not affiliated with, the, with with them and their culture and their pedophile culture. I'm not connected to them because, um, you know, they, they 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 whitewash the whole history of Hollywood. But it's always been based on uh, the flesh. Yeah, kids are not seeing it. At, you know, you know, auditioning for a part and then. Uh, and then I saw one thing where it was like uh, the, the story of uh, the story of um, Judy Garland and Renee Zewelger, Zewelger uh, uh, played the role of Judy as an adult. And of course, she, you know, she's one of the best actresses I have ever seen. Uh, and she won, I believe she won an Academy Award for that. If I'm not mistaken, but they showed her as a little girl, and I believe it was with Louis B. Mayer, maybe, or somebody was sponsoring her on The Wizard of Oz, and she was having problems focusing on her lines and her, you know, she was not supposed to get fat, and they had her on a diet, and and also the controlling, uh, they had Louis B. Mayer as this controlling kind of like, almost tried to like someone's trying to paint him as a pervert. I don't know much about that story. I do know that um, her handlers were, uh, had put her into the Menninger Foundation in the Midwest, um, which I'm an alumni of myself. <laughs> and uh, because she wouldn't um, cooperate with, uh, with anybody, you know, and I think that that came through in the film. But I mean, it was they they painted it like every adult in the film was a potential pedophile with her, you know, in the beginning when she was a child. And um, I don't know if they're trying to confess or they're trying to, you know, I don't know really not understand what they're trying to do there. Hollywood is basically, uh, you know, an ultimate, you know, a Greek and Roman hedonist. You know, a, a Greco-Roman hedonist. That's it. And if you don't, as one of my uh, actors and uh, Girl Next, Marcus told me, he said, you know, and he played the game a long time, and he's 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 a. Um, 
I don't know his status now, but he was, if, well, you know, he he was gay when he was in Hollywood. And he said, if you don't uh, put out when they want you to have sex, uh, you're done. You're dismissed. If you don't, if you don't snap to it, you're 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 dismissed. And I mean, snap to it immediately. You you will not get any role whatsoever. You will be dismissed from the entire. What's that? You'll be dismissed from the entire uh, uh, thing, and um, you know, for a lot of people, well, I guess there's a lot of talented people out there that uh, probably didn't make the cut. No, not so much because they're against sex or even same sex, but it's because they are too pure hearted. They, they don't, they're too naive. They don't understand what's being asked of them. And so they're dismissed. It's that simple. And so when you talk about the case of Lyle Menendez and Eric Menendez and Jose, the father, uh, they established that he had uh, gay trysts outside the marriage when he was traveling for business. And, um, you know, the boys said that, you know, it was abuse in the court kind of flipped on that narrative and went with the idea that they had a money motive to steal the money from the parents because they thought they're going to be cut out of the will. And uh, they tried to make it so that the, 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 the boy's testimony was all invalid. In other words, the victim was not believed. Now, if it were a girl, uh, two girls, two sisters, uh, that might, might have actually uh, uh, succeeded. But there is no, no belief. They flipped it and, and suggested the boys were paranoid. The father wanted nothing but the best for them. They had uh, they were privileged living in Beverly Hills. And, um, you know, nothing happened. You know, if it did, it was minor compared to just because a guy gets molested doesn't mean that you take a shotgun point blank to your mother or your father and shoot him in the face. That doesn't mean you'd right. So there's, so they were punished as if they were criminals. When I, I understand what they don't tell you in the movie. Lord, I'm going to have to ask you to have mercy on the filmmakers because my God, they're lying pieces of shit, aren't they? Real pieces of shit. Perpetuating the narrative that this was an isolated incident. When all over and over generations, abuse goes on in Beverly Hills and trafficking and children and the whole bit. It's raging on and on and on. And they have to blackmail you if you want to be a star so that you won't blab your trap and, and, and you know, talk about it. And if you do talk about what you've seen or there's, they feel threatened by you, then it's the jail, mental hospital, whatever just like the boys got, so that nobody entertains the idea that a lot of the fathers sodomize their sons to prepare them for life on that side of things. You know, the business life, the military industrial complex, the CIA, Hollywood. How else are you gonna get indoctrinated? So, the jury, and they couldn't get away with lying about that because it's part of the public record. The jury was split between the men and the women. The women wanted the boys thrown in jail. Yeah, because they're blabbing their mouths off about something that is systemic and not uh, an isolated incident by just a, a guy who happens to be a pervert that got promoted from Hertz motors an executive at hertz to an executive at live entertainment which was actually i did a film that was affiliated with live entertainment at the time it was one of the silent night deadly nights silent night deadly night four and um it got written up as uh the, the one that seems to be people's favorite it had nothing to do with christmas it's supposed to be a christmas story it had nothing to do with christmas but anyway so not an isolated incident. And of course I became aware eventually, and that prompted me to, 
to do society, the, the screenplay to, to, to start down that path. And it ended up being a, you know, super collaborative and the director had his direction, but it was still the same story. A boy raised by his family to be sacrificed. That's basically the story that never really changed. It, 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 those bones remained in it from the day one all the way to the very end. Uh, some of the other motivations changed. It was like, well, because the rich and powerful are genetically different from the rest of society. And uh, you're not just getting in, you got to be born into it. Okay, that's fine. That's taking the satire a little bit further. And then, of course, it became a comedy. To me, society is just a comedy. A class warfare comedy. You know, a satire, if you will. But it did allude to the fact that a lot of the peers at the high school were in on it. We're in on the secret. And they knew. And then if you start blabbing about it, what happens? Hospital, drugs, psychiatrists, discreditation, and eventually, you know, hopefully, uh, and they worked very hard on this, suicide the, your, your son, suicide your daughter, suicide them if they blab about it. It's one big cover up globally. And it's because people don't fear the Lord. And when the Lord says, if you, you know, abuse these kids, it's maybe better if you have a millstone tied about your neck and you're drowned at the bottom of the sea. Well, so the Menendez story was one big lie because of the producers, because of the writers, because of the idiot director and anybody else who had anything to do with it. You people are just fucking awful because you lied. You lied about the way the, the, the courts work. You lied about the state of California, the way laws practice. You lied about um, everything. And from what I understand, Lyle and Eric Mendez were separated and they got uh, life in prison without the possibility of parole, but eventually they moved them to a low security prison because they're not a flight risk and they put them together again so they could at least have each other and um they insisted this story about abuse is true and eric um, got married and eric got married yeah and that's true and the people who complain eric both eric and lyle and and, and eric's new wife tammy uh wrote letters to usa today and elsewhere to to complain on how uh evil uh, you know how 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 much of a lie that story really was in the hands of Netflix. Netflix should be ashamed of itself, but it's not because Netflix they know they know everything. So if they know everything, then they're not naive. So what does that mean? See, they can use Lyle and Eric Menendez to shut everybody else up, right? So if you're thinking about talking about your abuse of your famous father or famous mother, they're going to make sure that just doesn't get played. They're not going to tell you there's a Joan Collins on every block. Was that her name? Not Joan Collins. Who was the, uh, not Joan Collins. She was the author, right? The, the kids wrote a, a book called Mommy Dearest about her. Joan Crawford. That there's a Joan Crawford on every block or something like that. And of course, you know, the game is the game. And uh, if you want to be in the game, then it's expected that you participate in the game. If you don't participate, they're going to kick you out. If you're going to talk about it, they're going to destroy your life. And that's just, you know, mafia rules. Uh, that's the way it works. So, so, yes, I believe that the defense attorney, Leslie Abramson, who the, obviously the men didn't like her. She's very aggressive. Uh, she obviously knew 
And she obviously believed the boy's story. And she got completely demoralized in the uh, courtroom on the appeal case. And uh, that's another sad day. Another, another day, another cover-up. And what's the purpose of covering all of it up? Whether it be Washington, D.C. or Hollywood. What's the purpose of it? Why? Um, and the answer is to protect the rich and powerful from ever having to do time. Now, I know that you've got Harvey Weinstein at Rikers Prison doing time, and they punished him to make an example out of him. But what about all the hundreds and thousands of others? He, he, took, he took one for the team. He'll probably get out and make another movie. Yeah, I'm just, you look at this and I don't, I don't mean to get you guys depressed, but uh, it is what it is. It's just, um, I know the indoctrination for us kids began when we were before five years old because there were, you know, predators in the uh, group of friends of my parents that, uh, you know, me and my brother were asleep upstairs while they're having their party. It doesn't cost anything, you know, creep upstairs and enter the room. Hi, I'm a friend of your dad. Next thing you know is, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, naughty things going on. And um, if, if you talk about it, you go away. Uh, hopefully forever, you get your ass killed. And I think that times are changing now. I don't know why. And then they had Dominic Dunn as one of the characters. I can't even imagine. He knew everything that going on. He got all involved in the OJ thing about that time, but he knew everything. There's no way that Dominic Dunn was an honest writer. You know, he wasn't. He really wasn't. He glossed it over. He was a, a writer for Vanity Fair, of all things. Vanity Fair is the only purpose of Vanity Fair is to put a nice gloss, you know, and to say that here's the beautiful society, something you're never going to be good enough to get into, but here's the magazine you can buy to read about all the people you envy and what beautiful lives they have and what great charities they run and what a big difference they're making in the world today. Friends... <laughs> <laughs> they all have charities the more charitable amongst them are the more perverted my issue is they shouldn't harm children that's, that's where I come in because that's where I was harmed they shouldn't harm especially when your personality is forming you know because that's the next society that's coming up and since hollywood seems addicted to that i mean kids run away boys run away from home and they're, they they wander around they're 10 12 11 13 and they wander right into into these gay brothels what do you think is going to happen to them well before they come of age they're going to disappear Right now, we've got about 500,000 who have disappeared at the, from the border, trafficked by the cartels. Children are a big commodity and always have been in Hollywood. It's always been that way. They say, these are the facts of life. You better, you better just face it and accept that this is the way it is and keep your mouth shut if you want to have a decent life. And it shouldn't be that way. And I'll tell you, everyone that participates in that cover-up and that that life, you know, their minds are destroyed before they get old. You know, they start getting feeble around 60 years old. They're lucky if they die by 70. I didn't mean to rant on today about that. I just, after watching the rest of... Uh, I knew it was too good to be true that they were actually going to 
expose this monster the father as what he was a real monster instead they made it be the kids were the monsters and the parents were fine and i think that um it, it's it's well if this was 25 years ago i'd expect nothing less but here we are today and we all know better how many people do you think are watching that? Convinced that all of Beverly Hills is just normal people? You think they're normal? At least they did put the fact on the end that the the two sons still stand by their testimony that they were abused. Right. And they were very specific about the abuse. And also when they tested each kid, each kid had a similar story. I don't think it was rehearsed. It doesn't matter. It's just so typical. It's so typical. It's so typical. I suppose if you're a kid in Beverly Hills now and you're very confused, and if you hear this on the internet, and you wonder what to do. Well, how did how did I make it out of there? Well, I was put in bondage. I was I was handcuffed. I was I did jail time. I uh, whatever you know. I was in uh, uh, put in seclusion. And they almost got me. You know what? They almost had me to the shrink down in. Uh, where was it? Albuquerque? Because I can't seem to keep my tongue from flapping around. So whatever I was talking about down there, they, they took it upon themselves to abuse me with this MRI machine and two in the morning. And they wanted to see if I had brain damage, they said to Trish the next day in its way of explaining why they did what they did. Well, nobody has an appointment at two in the morning for an MRI. What are you talking about? And I woke up strapped to the machine. You know, I started punching at it. Trish said my hands were bloody even the next day when she visited. Now, here we go again. You know, institution. You know, here we go again. What was my crime? I was talking. I was just being myself. That was my crime. Just being myself. Being a human being. And with that, I bid you shalom, and we'll be back at you. Remember that Isaiah 41.10, um, you know, there's, whether you know it or not, you're always being helped. God is always helping. Amen. You know, and then, so that's where we are today. And, I've, and I do feel like, like I say, a geopolitical shift that they're going to probably Plan B, it, it involves Trump getting in and then doing something afterwards. So uh, I mean, what, what I mean by that is you may not see complete chaos, World War III and assassination attempts before the election. Can't guarantee after that, but I mean, it seems they're in disarray. And um, because the people are waking up at such a rapid pace that they just can't pull it off. Even like the assassination attempt, everybody's like looking at the Justice Department going, what are you guys doing trying to kill Trump? You guys hired that guy. You did it, FBI. You did it. Secret Service. Yeah, right. Yeah. You guys are disgusting. You should be ashamed of yourselves. But some of you should be uh, going to jail for life for treason. Yeah. Or, or whatever they do. I hear they do something even worse for treason. <laughs> we'll see you next time.
Thank you.